Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate JJ. Got another unboxing this afternoon. These appear to be the same box. I'm hoping that the insides are not the same thing. I bought both of them off the same uh, AliExpress listing. One of them was uh, billed as a capacitance meter, so I'm expecting that it will give me a reading in microfarads, nanofarads, picofarads. So there's a capacitance meter, which is cheap. It's uh, called the M6013. It's uh, labeled as the Type C, and I paid 36.95 Aussie dollars for it. So that's 25 US dollars delivered for the Type C M6013 capacitance meter. And it's a bit shifty because they make it look like they're going to sell you the Type A uh, kit, which is the MESR100. Now the MESR100 sells for 63.57 Aussie dollars, which is 40 bucks US. So in one of these boxes, we've got the Type C kit, which is the M6013 capacitance meter for $25. And in the other box, we've got the Type A MESR100 for US $40. Bucks. Um, the MESR100 is an ESR meter, not a capacitance meter. So they're two different things measuring two different things. Uh, the ESR is the um, equivalent series resistance measurement. You can use that to test if your uh, capacitors are dying or not. So uh, one, one reading for a capacitor is the capacitance, and another reading for the capacitor is the ESR. So together, these two bits of equipment will answer both of those questions. Um, you've got to be careful when you're buying the MESR 100. That's actually what you've ordered, because they can trick you into buying an M6013 uh, if you're not careful what you click on, because they're actually... Um, build as being very various options on the same product and they're obviously not the same product they're very different products um, so uh, anyway let's pop them open on the bench and see what we actually got all right here's the first one and uh, here's the second one both of them say ESR meter. The boxes are identical, um, but hopefully inside is two different bits of equipment. So that is the M6013, and this is the MSCR100. So that's exactly what we're expecting to see. So on the one hand, they've sold you a capacitance meter. Now this should just measure uh, capacitance. And uh, capacitance, of course, is measured in some fraction of a farad. So that's what we'll expect to see from this guy. Before testing, you must discharge the capacitor. Can you see that? Put him on the bench here. Before testing, you must discharge the capacitor by short circuit or resistor below 100 ohms for two seconds, or you may damage the meter. All right. Now this guy has micro USB and it's got uh, it's got uh, holes shall we say looks like four on each side we'll buzz that out and see what what, what the, the deal is with those and uh, it gave us some um, uh, alligator clips so those seem Quite reasonable, pretty good. And came with a manual. This is the version three. There we go. And it's in English so far. English works for me. Okay, that manual looks fairly good. Oh, there we go. It is. It's uh, it's actually documented. So four on the left, a negative. Four on the right, a positive. We might as well buzz it out anyway, why wouldn't we do that? Okay, and the back half of the manual is uh, Chinese. So the first eight pages are in English, so that's good to know. I'll have a close look at that later on. <clears throat> and then this guy is not a capacitance meter, it's an ESR meter. 
Uh, that's a bit disappointing because I was led to believe that I was going to get uh, tweezers and they didn't give me the tweezers. It's not the end of the world, I actually have tweezers. But uh, I, wanted, I wanted more and I, uh, I did order the one with tweezers but I did not get the one with tweezers. But I've got some tweezers, I've got some tweezers over here. I'll show you those. This is them. Tweezers, tweezers, tweezers. Can you see those? So you can just uh, measure your component with the thing. Because that's what I want to do is in circuit testing. And my plan is to buzz out, well, to do a whole bunch of in circuit testing of capacitance on the one hand and ESR on the other in circuit. And then after I finish the in circuit testing, I'm going to bust them all out of the motherboard and test them again out of circuit and just see what the various um, readings are. Because I'd, like I'd like to know that I could get accurate um, in circuit measurements. Means I don't need to uh, remove the um, capacitor every time in order to get a measurement. So I don't want to go replacing capacitors that don't need to be replaced. Now both of these have a little tab protecting the, um, the screen. So we'll take that off that guy and we'll take that off this guy. Okay. Oh, he didn't come off. That's annoying. I am pretty sure that it does come off. I'm not sure why it didn't come off. I don't want to damage it. I might just leave it there. Alright. QC passed. There we go. That's good. Oh, it does actually have a battery compartment in the back. That's pretty weird. Okay. And I wonder if this also has batteries. Actually, they seem very much to be the same uh, the same case, just the opposite colors. Interesting. All right, well, let's get our little screwdriver. Oh, no. Not finding the right bit. That'll work, probably. All right, that seems to be working. That's good. So, oh, we should have a quick look at the, the manual for this guy. Uh, yep, this is version 2. And again, it's uh, English in the front and uh, Chinese in the back. Interesting. Alright, I had a little table there showing you what you should expect. I think they've got the same table on the... Uh... I just dropped a screw. Oh, no, am I going to go searching for that now? I suppose I should. Not sure where it landed. Oh, there it is. Well, I dodged a bullet there. I've got a little magnetic thing up the back here. This is my magnet, so I'll just go fishing and get that. There he is, got my screw back. That's the screw for the um, the batteries on the MSER 100. So let's just get the batteries installed in this thing. Okay, it takes uh, two double A's. We'll assume the other one takes two double A's as well, and we'll pull out four double A's. So one, two. Three, four. Now, it does have a micro USB. I don't know if the micro USB would recharge rechargeable batteries. If I put rechargeable batteries in here, I suspect not. Anyway. Let's put him back together.
Fairly good. Fairly good. Am I going to leave this big caution? Maybe. in here. and they're uh, very clearly labelled the same and this is the model is the M6013 and the MSE, MESR100 so it's two totally different bits of equipment in the same box so who knows why they do that but it does seem a little bit deceptive there a little bit deceptive, which is a bit sad. Why, why can't we just be honest? Now this MESR 100 has standard worst case electrolytic capacitor ESR table. And it gives you the voltage rating and the, um, the capacitance. Only goes as far down as 10 microfarads. So this thing, this guy's not really got any interest in, in low value capacitors. Um, anyway, that's good to know. Now, as I said, I was expecting to get tweezers with this thing because that's what it showed on the uh, on the advertisement, and that's not what I got, um, which is just a tiny bit annoying. Oh, look at that, and just to make things even more annoying, I do have my own tweezers, that's these guys, tweezer, 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 but they've got uh, protective lugs on them um, that won't go in to this thing, so I've got to figure out if I'm going to damage my meter and, and put new lugs on them. I suppose that's what I'm going to do, you know, just between you and me. I do actually have two of these tweezers, so I can afford to doctor one of them and uh, and just install some new banana plugs. So uh, we might even do that right now together, huh? What do you reckon? Let's make a cable together. Why not? Let's put this guy away. So I wasn't planning to make a cable, but uh, we can do that, can't we? We're pretty clever, industrious type people, so let's throw our iron on and we'll turn our hot air, oh, well, leave our hot air on, why not? We might shrink wrap our cable in the end. And we're going to need some banana plugs. So what sort will we use? Might as well just use the ones that are sitting there on the top, huh? and they seem to want to have uh, um, a screw uh, put in them. I'm not sure if these are the same. Oh, there we go. A bag of screws. Well, got a, got a couple of banana cables and a couple of screws, so we might as well give it a go, huh? Now, I don't know if I've got some shrink wrap that will go over, over something that large. 
Yeah, okay, that shrink wrap's not quite big enough for that. I'll see if I can get a really big chunk of shrink wrap. Seems to be a big chunk on here. What do we reckon? Let's give him a go. Oh no, I just made a mess. Can't take me anywhere. Got all my sizes mixed up. Whoops. Fortunately, you can kind of eyeball these guys. Oh dear me. Anyway, this is the bit I was after at the back. Bit of red stuff. I don't know if it's too big. Might be. It's pretty big to me. Oh, I've got something even smaller than that. <sighs> what about this guy? Is he big enough? Can you see what I'm doing there? I'm just trying to get a bit of shrink wrap to open up. I might stick a tool in there. What about a flathead? There we go. And will that go over? It will. Alright, so there's one for red. And maybe if we get black, we'll get the same size. With any luck. Put them back together. So, let's give black a bit of a go. pretty good to me. Alright. Well. <sighs> Let's uh, chop the ends off. I'm going to just chop them right at the base so that I've got the longest piece of wire I can use. chopping time. So we'll chop that and we'll chop that. And these are junk now. Let's chop them in the junk box. This is my junk box. Yeah. We're going to need to trim a little bit. Now, this does seem to be able to take two screws. Uh, I'm not sure if I should use two screws, but I'm going to doll out four of these guys. And I'll put the rest of them back where I found them. And let's have a look. Now, before I forget, and because I really do just seem every time to forget, I'm going to put the, uh, <coughs> the shrink wrap on now so that I have it there when I need it there later on. Uh, the banana plug covers themselves actually uh, will screw on over the top, so we don't need to do those until the end. Alright, now I'm just going to need my wire strippers, that's these guys, and we're going to need enough wire to send it all the way up to the back. I think maybe I might use one screw for the wire and the other screw for the insulation. I don't know, I'm not sure. What do you guys think? Let's put the uh, the screws in. Now, as... Okay, so they've got the screw on one side. Um, Alright, well 
that's in. And then we've got to do the same on the other side. Presumably, or maybe it's optional which one you use. You use one or both, or I don't know. These didn't come with instructions, they just came in a bag. So, uh, I just dropped my screw. That's a shame. Oh, man. I think I'd take more care. Oh, there he is, that's good. I wonder if these things are magnetic. They are. Ah, oh, that's good. Well, if they're magnetic, I'll just hit my driver with the magnetizer. And if the screwdriver is magnetized, perhaps the screw will just stick in place. Maybe some blue tack, and I'm going to take these gloves off. They're uh, too cumbersome for this work. Take off my gloves. tack there and a little bit of blue tack there and if we can just get that guy in there all right might as well put the screws in the other ones going to try uh, screwing the the, um, uh, the wire in at the top and the insulation in at the back. I'm not sure if that's a reasonable thing to do or not, but I'm going to give it a go. And I'm not sure what kind of a, um, a wire we're dealing with here. Let's give it a go at 18 gauge. Uh, 18. Yeah, okay. And maybe about that much. Oh, wow, there's not much wire in there at all. <sighs> yeah, I'm not real sure about this. Anyway, we'll see. Now at this point, the polarity is not important. You can use either one in either situation. So if we put him in, and he goes right up the back. Gee, I'm not real confident about this at all. Maybe I should put some sort of a lug Just want to see how far in these guys actually go. Yeah, that's terrible. They don't go far in at all. What I really want is some kind of a, a lug. It's funny, what I want is a banana plug. <laughs> of course, that's not what we have. Uh, I'm going to stop the video and go rummaging. I'll be back in a tick. Alright, well I'm back and I've got two, I think 2.8mm uh, spade lugs here and here and I've got my engineer crimping tool which is an awesome bit of equipment. 
Unfortunately, this is one a small one, um, so it might not actually work for this particular purpose. But we'll give him a go. See where we land. Yeah, how annoying! I actually I'm planning to buy the next size up, which is really what I need here. <sighs> yeah. All right. I tell you what. Um, I'm going to finish this cable another day. I'm going to get myself a new one of these um, engineer crimp tools. This one only goes up to 1.9 millimeters. The one I'm planning to get will do up to 2.5 mil, which ought to be good enough for this. These are 2.8 mil on this end, but I think that the the bigger engineer uh, crimping tool will work for our purposes. So what I need. <laughs> need is just a little project box. So I've got this old uh, Chinese takeaway container. So we'll put that in there and those in there and those in there and we'll wrap this guy up and put him in there. And that is uh, the, the um, project is to, to create uh, the um, tweezers um, probe. So that's, that's good. And uh, when the um, new crimping tool has arrived, uh, we will... Oh, one of my things fell out. I'll just fix that quickly while we're here. Um, when the new crimping tool arrives, I can finish making this uh, cable rather than futzing around with the the tool that's not quite the right tool for the job. This crimper is excellent, but it's only good for small jobs. It's, it's, uh, it's sort of like a precision crimper. Um, and you can get a bigger model, and it's on my shopping list to get it. And I wasn't going to get it because I didn't have any need for it. But it looks like I do have a need for it, so I'll get it. And it'll probably arrive tomorrow. Anyway. So I'll put that in the corner and we'll pack away some of these tools and we'll continue with our unboxing um, we'll continue with our unboxing of our MSE R100 ESR meter and our M6013 capacitance meter I tell you this is annoying me already Am I going to leave it there? I suppose I'll leave it there. Why not, right? Now, uh, I've got over here... <sighs> so I'm going to put um, this guy on continuity mode. I'm not sure if I can put it... If I can make him beep. I don't know if he beeps. Um, so we've got common and positive, and we've got these two little guys here, and that goes to zero, but what we want is a beep, beep, beep. So what about if we hit mode, voltage, capacitance, uh, resistance, voltage, oh, there we go, there we go. Yep. Okay, that's what we want. It's only a faint beep, but it'll do. So we should find beep, beep, beep. No beep, no beep, no beep, no beep. And then we should find beep, beep, beep. Yep, that was exactly what I expected to see. So the, the, th uh, the four pins on the left are negative, and the four pins on the right are positive and it'll be the same for this but it never hurts to test so it should be beep 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 nothing 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 and it should be nothing 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 beep 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 ripper that's all we needed to do on that one so we've got it here we can put these back Now, 
Let's measure some capacitors. I've got some dead caps floating around too. So, we might as well uh, check that out. Alright, power on. Power on. Who's ready? <coughs> Alright, so here's our two meters. Can you see those? Not really. I wonder. <sighs> yeah. Alright, now there should be a zero function, and there is. So we put them together, and we zero. Ah, oh, zeroing needs to open test leads. Alright, so. Zero. Interesting. All right, so that was zero. Let's press zero over here. Oh, and this one, zero needs to short. Fascinating. All right, zero. All right. I, uh, my body is clocking in at uh, a couple of thousand picofarads. That's fine. All right, well. I've got a box full of dead components. Do you see that? Dead components. So let's have a look at a couple of them. So this is billed as a uh, 3,300 microfarad 10 volt Nichicon electrolyte. So it's supposed to be 3,300 UF. So let's see. And it's reading in at 3,400 UF. So that uh, that is the correct capacitance. And now we'll check the ESR. Now these should be low ESR because they're they're from the Xbox power system. And the ESR, oh that's tiny. That's quite good, isn't it? So 1000 UF, 10 volt, 0 0.12, and that's 0 0.012. So this is a perfectly good capacitor. Fascinating. It's in good uh, mechanical shape as well. The, the top of it hasn't... Uh... Can you see that pretty well? I think you can. So let's just do it again for the record. So uh, this is positive. And this is negative, and the rating goes up to 3,400, which is about right. And then this guy goes up, goes down very low, and then comes up and settles out. Oh no, it's as it warms up, uh, its ASR is changing, but its ASR is still very low. That they say that for a 10 volt capacitor, which this one is, that the worst case ESR is 0 0.12 for a 1000 UF. That's actually closer to 4700, which is 0 0.23. So this thing is like one tenth of the worst case, a whole order of magnitude away from the worst case. So I don't think there's any reason to be upset about this one at all. That's quite good. And it is, of course, supposed to be low ESR. So there we go. I'm going to take anything that reads good, and I'm going to put it in
an unknown parts box. It's not really an unknown part though, is it? What am I going to do with him? Hmm. I'm, I might have like a capacitor junk box. I will. Let's make a let's make a labeler. All right. Put it in there. Now, have you seen the the brother label maker? This thing's the bee's knees. So we'll clear the text, and we're gonna call it the capacitor. Now, if you haven't got yourself one of these, run, don't walk, over to eBay and buy yourself one because they're awesome. And when you have it, you'll be able to label all your stuff and you'll be super organized like your mate JJ. I'm fairly organized. kind of consider myself a professional organizer. Uh, you know, you're a computer programmer. Computer program is just pretty much about being organized. I remember I had a mate, he was really stoned, and he said to his girlfriend, I'm not hardcore, I'm organized. And she paid him out about that forever. She didn't let him forget that he said that. Which is pretty funny, really. Now. One other thing that I do uh, is I put a little silica gel in my component boxes and I like to explain it by saying that it's a cargo cult thing, leave me alone, it's just what I do. So it's probably completely unnecessary, but I do it anyway. So, we've got a whole bunch of dead cats, let's go through them one at a time and we'll, uh, we'll sort them into uh, dead caps. And, uh, and not dead caps. Now we've got a light globe in there. I'm pretty sure this didn't work. I'll tell you what, let's just quickly put a couple of volts through in. And, uh, and see if he's uh, actually dead or just playing dead. So we're going to need, let's say... Ah, okay, so the output's set at 2.4 volts, that's not really high, so uh, that's probably okay, you could probably put 2 volts, 2.5 volts into a, into a globe, let's give it a go. is not a dead globe. That is a functional globe. Alright, well that's good to know. So instead of putting him into the junk box, the dead components, I'll put him in the unknown components box, which is a different kind of a thing, isn't it? Although the light globe's not really an unknown part, is it? It's pretty obviously Oh, now this, uh, this is a, a Nichicon. Oh, no, it's not a Nichicon. It's the uh, powers, the ags, yeah, aerogel power store or whatever. But it's missing one leg. So this is truly a dead cap. And these are all going to be dead caps, but they're, they're measurable. So, and these, these things are huge. They might actually um, blow the blow the specs of the meter because it's a 2.5 volt, one farad capacitor. Anyway, that looks like the negative side to me. Let's see what happens. Alright, it's shooting up. 
Oh, it's capacitance. Rubbish. It's measuring in at 66 picofarads, which is basically like saying nothing. Fascinating. All right. And let's measure its ESR. I wonder if I had the polarity the wrong way around. I'm not sure. All right. Oh, and it just says open circuit. Yeah, well, this capacitor is well and truly shot. All right, let's do all the aerogels. These are all um, the clock capacitors out of the old Xboxes. Um, but they're notorious for failing, so I'm not expecting any of them to work. But let's see what we can read off them. All right, this one's measuring a couple of nanofarads, which is not very much. Certainly not like one farad, which this thing is supposed to be. open circuit as well. Okay. And we've got a couple of these clock capacitors to clock through. So we'll just do them one at a time. Oh no, that one's lost his lead, so it saves us a bit of time messing around with it. And this guy, I'm really hard, it's hard to get the polarity on these. I'm not real sure, it's not clear. Uh, all right, yeah, it's pretty much registering nothing. And the ESR meter says open circuit. Okay, well, we haven't had any of those read correctly. Well, I wasn't really expecting much. That one's shot as well. All right, so that does all of our clock capacitors. Now, we had some luck with this big honking thing. So this is his brother. So this is a 10 volt 3300 microfarad Nichicon. I'm expecting this will work just fine. So it should give us a good sensible capacitance reading. And up we go. 3390. Very happy about that. And any ESR less than about 0.1 will be considered pretty good. So let's give that a try. And it's 0 0.01. Oh, it's gone all the way down to 0 0.02. And as it warms up, it's increasing a bit. And it's gone up to 10. Sorry, that's 0 0.010. Can you see? I'm not real sure. Uh, anyway, there we go, up to 0 0.12. No, not 0 0.12. 0 0.012. Uh, so that's good. That's the same as the other one. We're going to call him functional. So he's functional. Now let's do the green ones and then we'll do the black ones. Uh, the green ones aren't all the same. So we'll do all the same ones together. see those might give you a bit more of a view all right I don't know if all these black guys are the same maybe they are so this unboxing turned out to be an unboxing and a demo there you go you always get a little bit of extra value when you come to in the lab with JJ so um, yeah, I'm going to sit here and have a look at all of these, sort them into the good pile and the dead pile. So let's go. Now this is supposed to read uh, 1500 microfarads at uh, 6.3 volts. Alright, up we go. Okay, it's showing 1600. That's pretty good. It's supposed to be 1500. And then the ESR is weighing in at 0.04. So this is at uh, low voltage. And yeah, anything less than 
0.1, so it's easily within spec. That's good, so here's a good one. And uh, let's do the capacitance of this guy. And he's jumped up to 1600, that's what we want to see. And the ESR is small, very small. Of course, it goes up a bit as it heats up, but it's well within spec. That's good. And then we do this guy. There really is just uh, no point in fixing things that aren't broken, is there? Although maybe, maybe they're old and they're on their way out and you should just recap the whole board. I don't know. What do you reckon? Okay, that's 0. 0.0. Yeah, okay, so it goes all the way down and then it starts to warm up and it comes back up. But it's well and truly within spec, I mean, easily, according to this table here anyway. Uh, yeah, these capacitors seem to be in pretty good health. So, there we go. Okay, that's at 3300, which I forgot to get the reading. Yeah, that's what we're expecting. So that's working. That's well within spec as well. And this guy is supposed to be the same, 3,300. And up it goes, 3,200, that's pretty close. And the ESR is uh, low. So, pretty happy about that. You know, the ESR does climb up as you leave them. Oop, I just put that in reverse polarity. Can't take me anywhere. Lucky it doesn't blow up on me. Alright, so up we go. It's another 3300. That's measuring correctly. And the ESR is low. It's all the way down to zero and then it starts climbing up and it'll settle in at about 0.012. There we go, 10, 12, it's floating around 10 and 12. Fair enough. I've heard heat um, affects the readings. Um, oh, this, this guy looks like he's in really bad shape. So let's see what he says. Oh wow. Yeah, this uh, this capacitor is dead meat. Yeah, look at that. You can't see probably, but it's super bulgy. Oh look, the top's really bulgy as well. And it's supposed to be 3,300. Not even close. So this is a truly dead capacitor. And the ESR is low. Fascinating. So the ESR is low, but the capacitance is right out of spec. Wow. I wonder if it's just basically shorted out. I wonder what would happen if we uh, tried buzzing him out. Let's put our thing back on. There we go. So he's on continuity. And if it's uh, low resistance, it should beep at us. So let's give him a go. Got some cheapo probes here. These will do. And yeah, look at that. Okay, so this uh, capacitor is literally shorted. Fascinating. So that's a, that's a capacitor that's failed so badly it's, it became a short circuit. This is the same type. And 
Okay, it's reading 3.4 microfarads, which is way out, several orders of magnitude wrong. And let's see what its ESR is. ESR, very low. 0 0.022. Ah, interesting. I wonder if this is short circuit as well. 0 0.02 ESR. So maybe. Oh, I have to turn him off. Yep, not actually a short circuit. So let's carry on. This guy. Oh look at that. He doesn't he doesn't register much capacitance at all. And uh, the ESR. So you really do need both readings because you can get ESR looks fine and the capacitance is shot. You can probably have it the other way where the capacitance is fine and the ESR is shot. Oh look, I don't even want to bother testing this thing, it's bulging like crazy. Still, it'll be interesting just to see what the scope says. Alright, so he's clocking in around half a microfarad. And the ESR is low, but not super low. Oh no, it's gone super low now. It's just going lower and lower. Alright, might be a short circuit again. Let's give it a short circuit test. Alright. No. Oh, yep, there we go. Short circuit. That low ESR is effectively a short circuit, isn't it? Alright. Let's try this one. So. Yeah, he's shot as well. Man, these caps are in bad state. And the ESR says... Low. Have we seen a situation yet where we've got a high ESR and a, and a good capacitance? I don't think we've seen that situation yet. This capacitance is rubbish. Oh no, what's it doing? Oh, now it's giving a correct reading. Interesting. So it's it's uh, it's well over spec. It's supposed to be three thousand three hundred, uh, but it was over four thousand. Let's just do it again. Up we go. Four thousand. Yeah, roughly four thousand. So it's it's a bit over spec. Let's uh, see what the ESR says. Oh, the ESR is huge. There we go. So this is an example of the capacitor. It's the capacitance is fine, but the ESR is terrible. 0.41. Way too high. There we go. Oh, the meter's just paid for themselves. And... Uh, This guy, he's up, he's within spec. That's good. And the ESR says hi. Fascinating. So the ESR on this guy is rubbish, and he's dead as well. I'm glad we got a few where the capacitance is good and the ESR is bad. So that's pretty cool. Glad I kept these components handy to have around for this testing. Alright, this is another one where the uh, capacitance is pretty much on the money. Maybe a bit higher even than spec. And the ESR says high. So it's shot as well. And then one last one. Uh, negative and positive. And the capacitance is... Oh, it's all over the place. Wow.
It's gone into Millie Farad's. <laughs> That's awful. That's really wrong. And uh, the ESR says low. Fascinating. Let's get a capacitance reading again. Yeah, 12 millifarads. That's huge. So that's that's well wrong. It's supposed to be 3,300 mics. Anyway, there we go. So in future, my dead components will actually be dead because I've got another box over here for capacitors that aren't dead. And they 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 look mechanically sound. They're they're not bulging, and they have uh, correct capacitance readings and correct ESR readings. So that concludes our unboxing. Uh, thanks very much for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.